Hello, good morning. My name is Bruno, uh, and I'm here to talk with you about packages in PHP. Uh, I've been working with PHP for the last eight years. I had several roles uh, into PHP. Uh, recently, I joined Devante uh, as a tech leader and a solution architect. And uh, just a few words about Devante. We are a software house specialized in e-commerce. We have more than 200 employees. We have tons of projects and some products as well. And uh, we are hiring. If you want, please take a look. Uh, so let's dive into and uh, what is a package? So a package is a piece of uh, reusable code that you can simply drop into your application. It can be used without uh, adding any complexity to your code, and you don't need to, uh, to know what's happening inside. It only exposes an API of their classes. So a few days ago, I saw actually this Twitter from this guy, and uh, actually this sum up everything. So you can uh, reuse the code in yourself, you'll have tests, you'll have documentation, and the community will be thankful, of course. If you don't, uh, if you are into Laravel and uh, you don't know this guy, you really should take a look at this. They have awesome packages. So, why package? Because it's a, a modular and maintainable code. You just plug and play, and that's it. It will group several pieces into one logical module, and you can reusable the code. You can share with the, all your team, and they know how to use it. You need to define your domain for your for your uh, code. So you put everything into into a package. Let's say, for example, if you have uh, payments, you can just drop all the payments uh, domain into that package, or it can be a simple tool. Um, let's say that you have some API clients that handles like that integration. You can just drop everything into that package, and you can simply reuse that later. Or, for example, if if you have like some kind of dev kit uh, that handles uh, code for yourself, you can just drop that and all the other teams can, can use. And of course, we love open source. We use open source in our, our, our projects, uh, from the framework that we are using, from our operative system, things like that. Of course, I'm talking about Composer, our dependency manager, and of course, the packages that can help you find and uh, publish your packages. So, how to build a package? So let's start with an idea. You need to have an idea what, what you are going to do. Or maybe you are finding a solution for the problem. And to start, you just write your simple composer package, composer JSON, uh, with your auto load, and that's it. You need to find a name, of course. So choosing a good name is important because it will help you sell your package. Uh, like, for example, you have PSR log, Symfony console, Spatzy Laravel uh, permissions. It tells you exactly what they are for, right? But for another hand, having some kind of catchy names like Gazelle Hoops, it will also help you uh, sell in the package. Write a good documentation, not only the readme to with some description on uh, how to, to use it, but you can also write a wiki, how to contribute, the code of conduct, issues and pull request templates, things like that. You choose a license. Uh, you have several licenses to choose, MIT, GPL, or even property. Uh, and GitHub nowadays helps you just drop the, the license into, into your code. So. Keeping a change log is also important. Who writes here? Who writes a uh, change log? I can count with my hand. <laughs> okay. And uh, who writes release notes? Okay, getting a little bit better. Could be better. Okay, so this, I, I also myself don't write so often this, those things, but this really helps uh, the community to understand what you are changing and why you are changing. And uh, be careful with also to with the versioning on this. Uh, the API. I'm not talking about the HTTP API for, for this, but this is the interface of your application. The way that I'm going to use your package, the way that I'm going to implement. And uh, keep in mind also the versions that it can break my code. Build some CI. Uh, write your unit tests, some kind of uh, static analysis, or some kind of pipeline to help you to integrate with the community. You can use a lot of uh, systems, uh, GitLab, Cat, 
their own uh, CI CD integrated. Uh, GitHub now has actions, or you can use, like, for example, uh, our friends from Buddy, that it really makes it easier. So, versioning. Uh, keep in mind that there's different kinds of versions. You have your major, minor, and patch. And uh, the most important, be aware of your backwards compatibility because it's the most annoying thing. It's when I update something in my project and it breaks because you make some broken change in, in, uh, in that package. And your composer lock. So, I like to believe that everybody commits your composer lock in your project, but into in the if it's a project, of course it makes sense. But if it's a package, just ignore it because it doesn't make any sense. The main composer will not not read that lock. And frameworkless. So if you are I, most of us use um, frameworks, right? Uh, but if you are building a package, does it really needs to be for that specific framework or can be simply for anything? If you, if you try to make this for any framework, just a pure PHP package, it will, you'll have much more, let's say, clients for your, for your package. So now, let me tell you a few stories uh, about how package helped me and uh, my teams to, uh, to improve our, our quality. So a few years ago, I, um, I joined the company. They had like a really big uh, uh, CRM uh, deployed in several countries, and um, our domain it was car business, but also the same uh, code was used for uh, real estate. So it was a little bit messy there. There was no no composer there. There was uh, we used uh, Git modules for that. Uh, we had some vendor committed there. Uh, and it was 2014, so not so long ago. And this is how it looked like, the, the structure of, literally, the structure of, of uh, the folder. So we had the code base at CRM that this is managed by another team, and we only needed to take care about our modules and countries. Uh, we started making two pull requests for the code base and CRM just to have the composer JSON into their, uh, into their repository, and then we can simply use our composer to handle this. And in the end, it looked like something like this. We don't care anymore about the code base and CRM. It's just a package for us. And then we, we start split it into the models into small package. So from here, we had much more flexibility because we could uh, spread all our domain into small package. And, uh, and also, we could have their PHP unit uh, uh, Guzzle, Twig, uh, we, we put uh, Doctrine there, and it was making much more sense. The downside of this kind of approach is like it's harder to make any releases. Uh, as you can imagine, if I need to make a new release for the message model, I needed to go to my main project and update everything. But yeah, at least it looks much better. So then, a few months later, I moved to a really big team. Uh, we were more than 100 uh, engineers there. We had one code base. We were split into six, seven teams. Uh, the teams were split into four countries. So it was a really big, really big uh, team there. And this is how it looked. We had those are, are just an example of the teams that was working next to me. Uh, and as you can imagine, it starts being a little bit chaotic. Like we have 100 people committing everything to the same repository. You had a lot of merge conflicts, and we needed to tear down that monolith. So this was my team. It was called monetization team. We only take care of about invoicing and pay payments. So we split everything into to a small package. And after that, it, it gives even a flexibility to go a little bit further. We start in, in implementing into microservice and also in Lambda functions. That was making us making really small releases, much more often, and it was really easy to, to maintain. CI/CD was always getting heated with new releases. Recently, as I mentioned, I joined Devante, and uh, we built a lot of package. 
uh, we even have our own private packages to, to manage our private package. But we open source the most as, as we can, of course, depending on the client. Uh, and it's a really good feeling that you, you are writing something not only to help us working, but also to help all the co community. And I s I've been in charge in, uh, with the team uh, for around six months. Uh, and our framework is based in Symfony. Uh, and uh, besides using the latest version of Symfony, it, it still is bundles. So it's bundle, bundles, bundles. And this is how it looks like. We have a bunch of, of bundles. And when we started designing the application, uh, one of my goals, it was let's keep a bundle for each domain of, of, the, of the application. So uh, as you can see, we have an API bundle. It's just a bunch of controllers. And, but as you, can, as you can imagine, API bundle also returns products. And why not having a product uh, a controller under a product bundle that returns the products? Well, my goal here, it was like, no, because my, the API needs to be fast. And uh, to be fast, we decided to go with the Elasticsearch. That's why you created Elasticsearch bundle, just to make queries and insert something in the Elasticsearch. And we end up with this solution. So we have all the bundles here listed still. As you can see, we have Elasticsearch bundle outside. So we created a package. Elasticsearch bundle is just a bunch of queries, nothing else. Uh, that handles all of the kind of, uh, of queries that I need for my API. And on the right side, this is how it looks like the main application. On the left side, there are three sim uh, small microservices that use Elasticsearch bundle to query, but also product bundle use Elasticsearch to insert. So in, in this way, we, we have the application completely separated, and it's much easier to maintain this kind of applications than the big bundles. Um, so now, I will tell you some tips that I use uh, in my daily work. Uh, for example, uh, to build a local package, I simply set the repository's path and then the URL. The URL is my local co computer. Or even if I want to use a private package and you don't have your uh, own private packages, you can simply set that the type is VCS, and then uh, you put your URL. In this case, you need to set up the half of your composer, but no big deal. And as I mentioned, we build quite a lot of package there, and uh, also projects. Uh, and y having some kind of templating, uh, it really helps you to set up everything from the beginning. W I created this. Uh, this application is a really small application. I, I wrote this in Python because why not? Uh, but it's basically it's a, a boilerplate for all of those kinds of uh, packages that we are building and also uh, projects. As I mentioned before, the documentation is re really easy. And nowadays, you have a GitHub that gives you all of those tools. That you have the checklist that you can simply click, and it, it will create. If you need some kind of license, you just uh, click there, and it will. You can choose the license for your package. I know that Composer is not so fast. It's not the fastest thing in the world, of course not. But uh, this this package. Hirac Prestissimo, what it does, it downloads everything, all your package in, in parallel. And after that, the, that you have all the package in your machine, it will only load from cache. So I, you can speed up if you have tons of dependencies, it really can speed up this. And the most important thing, be kind with the community. Just because I made a release that broke your code, sorry about that. Uh, but there's no reason for you to curse me in GitHub issues or, or merge requests or anything. Just go there and help people. Because I'm pretty sure that everybody is open for help. And that's what I mean. And thank you. <laughs>